Hello and welcome to another edition of Connecting Live. Well, this is my first Connecting Live from the UK. So I'm very excited. We have Tommy Hitman Hodgson joining us today. So just waiting for him to connect and we will add him to the list. You should ask Tommy, let me turn off these comments first before I get started. Um, Hope everyone's well. I'm so excited. The Kexton Lives are back. Hi! Hi, uh, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Sound, can you see us? I can see you! <laughs> Good stuff. Nice t-shirts. Wrap in. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? No, not much. Just uh, flat out, to be honest. Training my... Well, this is why I said that we do a live so that we could, like, obviously get you now before it gets too close to your pro debut and then yeah. we're like, it, it's mayhem. So... What are we now, like, it's a good few weeks out, so it's August 27th is when you make your professional six debut. Six and a half weeks. Six and a half weeks. So talk to us about where you're at right now in terms of your training, in terms of what's happening in camp, what yeah. the differences are from, you uh, know, obviously where you've come from to... To be honest, Lydia, I've been flat off age. I've been ready for ages to fight. Yeah. Now it's just about keeping it, keeping it steady and just seeing, like, Making to be a little tweet here and there. I've got some good sparring next week with Maxi Hughes, British champion. So I'll see where I'm at as well, uh, going through my camp and stuff like that. So I've got some good sparring, I know. So obviously, Maxi Hughes, like, that's, you know, that's not an easy spar. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I like to guide myself and see where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be good. So, it, it, like, you strike me as, like, the type of person who is always trying to be better like always always raising and trying to raise the bar for yourself you need to see where you are don't you yeah that's what it is so it's good it's good it's good so i mean obviously professional debut on the 27th of august what was the decision because you've had such a good amateur background yeah. you've yeah. got so many titles you're part of team gb you have the aba championship you know so what was the decision for you to go pro now I feel like the pro suits me massively, to be honest. Say, like. and then mm -hmm. with GB, my weight got took away. I was I was competing at lightweight, sixty kilo, and it, it got removed for the two female weights to go for the Olympics. So it got moved up to sixty three, and there was like there was like six or seven men trying to compete at this weight, and I thought, I'm the one really so. We, we've obviously, I've been to Newcastle, we've done the interviews before, we've done yeah. a little exclusive on, on you announcing your professional debut and that was obviously something that we spoke about when I was up there with you and yeah. it's like, what we had spoken about is that the misconception that if you're a good boxer, if you have like a good amateur heritage, you go ahead, you ha take all these fights, you, you enter all these like European championships or whatever, there is actually no guarantee that you will get placed no. onto the bigger squads. No, there isn't that, there isn't. Like, when I was on, basically, it was already picked when I got on the squad, to be honest. Right. So, and like, yeah. there's, people, there's people being on for years and years and years, and I, I was only on for two years. Mm -hmm. So, like... I wouldn't say there's favourites, but there's people who go to competitions, who get picked over people and just get a medal, and mm -hmm. why, why, would they, why, why would they not go, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Do, do, do you feel, as someone who's been part of that, as, has, as someone who has experienced how it works, do you think it needs to change? Like, does there need to be a shift in how we do things? You can't, you can't really say that, though, because if, if you're going to tournaments and meddling, then what else can you say? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is. Are you nervous that there is that preconception that good amateur champions, good amateurs, that turn pro... Sometimes it doesn't it doesn't work out for them, you know. It, it it's nothing so, is guaranteed. Not a chance, no. But I believe I I think I'll strive in the professionals. Make on I think I'll do twice as much as I did in amateurs in the professionals. Absolutely, and listen, we're in a time now where no one is guaranteed a fight. I mean, you weren't guaranteed a fight before. It's but even the, worse now. <laughs> yeah, I'm fighting. You know, I would really fall to me back garden. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All this stuff, I mean, you come with Empire and that has just been a blessing. Like. Yeah, well, let, let's let's talk about that because obviously, you know, we do have a closer relationship because of my partnership with Empire, yeah. with Empire Fights or with One, One Empire Management. Um, obviously, One Empire Management under the guidance of Jamie Sheldon, who has worked in boxing, worked in this industry for 
over 20 years. Everyone will know him as Cutman Sheldon, the, the much loved Cutman. The legend. The legend. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, how did how did this um how did this whole you know come about? And it, it's very rare for it very rare for someone in their pro debut to have such a good management team behind them and to have such a a big management plan in place, let's say. Off my shoulders is unbelievable. Like yeah. I, I left GB thinking I'm just going to go straight to the pros, bang, bang, bang. Then obviously the COVID happened. Then I was a bit stuck for ages. I was just in one spot and I was like, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? I was ready to fight for ages. And then this come along, then everything just fell to places. It allows me to just focus on boxing, training, and that's it. And everything else is covered. Did you have any prerequisite for Jamie like did you say okay I'm going to sign with you this the, you know what you're putting on the table sounds good give me click and he quit it was pretty good actually me. say that again we missed that a little bit what you're saying clicked well we got on yeah. with Jamie like I, I he's class he's, he's, he's mental he rings his every day he'll want the day <laughs> I speak to him more than I speak to my family man it's mad it's mad yeah. he's a class bro like yeah know? it is but th that that's what has to you know when we look at the relationship between like a, a, a fighter and management, you have to have that relationship, don't you? Like that trust, you have to know that th th there's, you know, that your career is in his hands. So it, it, you have yeah. to have that close bond. Yeah, hundred percent. And I and I and honestly say I trust Jamie like his class. His men. Good stuff. Let's talk about how what this means, like this pro debut, the excitement. Because I I'm hearing from everyone in the office, you know, about your tickets being sold. There's like bus loads being prepared. Yeah. You're obviously fighting August 27th, all White Zone, Sheffield Arena. Wait, but all my pals, like literally, they've, they've, been, they've been having this for ages for tickets. Yeah. When you fight, when you fight, and I'm like, can I tell you just yet? You know what I mean? I don't. <laughs> but as soon as I've told everyone the amount of messages and that I've got off people, it's feeling me, isn't like. What do you what do you think it is? Why why do obviously your friends are going to get behind you, but yeah. you seem to have more of a you know it's your area, your community oh, are very much behind you. My God, it's tiny and everyone knows each other, and I, I'm pretty well known for boxing. And to be honest, I didn't know I was that well liked till like yeah. I sort of like <laughs> sort of get on board and like messages and I see, like this that and the other, and I was like, bloody hell, I'm loved around yeah, like. <laughs> Don't let that go to your head, right? <laughs> stay humble, stay humble. But it's good, it's good to have them like coming to watch you and they, all the nice messages, and that means the world, man. The messages it gets class. When you read them, they, oh wow. Do you know what, as well? Like, I mean, obviously, it, 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 to know that you have the sport is a good thing, but we're now in this day and age where to be a professional boxer, just to, to turn over. It's not just about boxing. You ha There's so much pressure on new boxers. You have to be a good boxer, good style. We want to see knockouts. We want to see excitement. We also have to be able to sell a few tickets. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I thought I, would, I wouldn't think I would. I always thought I would sell a fair few, but I was never busy on social media. Me, I didn't really do much on social media. I just, like probably wouldn't for boxing. I probably wouldn't have Instagram and Facebook and that. But uh, yeah, I like. As soon as I started mentioning stuff on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, everyone was just jumping on, jumping on messages when you find no one tickets. Or this. I literally put a post on yesterday and the amount of messages I got on about tickets and stuff like that was amazing. I was like, Jesus. Everyone's mad for a night out. Oh, in my area, like, for boxing, as soon as something happens in my area, everyone would jump on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, maybe it's because of COVID as well. Like, seeing nothing's happened because of COVID and as soon as an event happens, everyone in my area wants to go and drink and do whatever you know what I mean go out party so so let, let's talk about your area like I mean there's obviously so many amateurs there's so many guys with potential that are coming through but let's look at the guys that are you know already coming through that are yeah. already making a name for themselves like two in particular Joseph Laws and also April Hunter your two best friends right. like right. is that just a case of we have similar interests we get on with each other that's where our friendship has originated or is there something in the water up there that everyone's just a good fighter <laughs> I think it is, you know there's loads of fighters up there like from Berkeley Berkeley the fighters are like they obviously Pat and Luca are in the Olympics and that now and all them fighters are going to come through there's loads of fighters that come. Newcastle's going to be massive for boxing mm -hmm. huge Not so Tony April yeah April. absolutely we've knew each other for years I mean, April was pals with my sister and they, these when they were proper kids used to drink on fields and that together and like, they, they were proper best mates man you you really are very close with each other oh. so it's so lovely hey Joe me Joe and April speak all the time every day mm -hmm. it's a shame that like, she went down to the pool and Joe's and Moore's and I thought we're always like, we're like that like, 
class. Absolutely. Do, do, I mean, obviously you have that friendship, um, that, that personal relationship with each other, but is there, I mean, do you talk about your careers with each other? Do you ask for of advice? Of course, of course. Joe's, Joe's, been, Joe's like a little dad to me at the most. Honestly, I swear, the stuff, the stuff he messages and that, and like, you always say, I've got mates and that, like, but see, Joe, Joe's like, genuine, like, Joe, like, put out wants me to do well, like. Yeah, Probably amazing. The class, he's a class lad, like, the stuff he, like, he honestly, he wants you to do the big, he, like, he looks out for you, like, the, the mess, mm -hmm. like, like, once, once not so long ago, you just drop some meals off at my door, right, like, prep meals and just text us in, stay on it, mate, boom, and just left loads of meals at my house. Wow, that's, that's a good guy. That's a good friend. Like, he's just went always go like little tubs of hummus, like little bits of peanut butter. And that. <laughs> right, just, in, just stay on a bro, and I was like, that's, to go your way and do that, that's kind of mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So obviously, before we finish up, because I know you want to get to train, but um, obviously we done a documentary with you when we were up on, yeah. uh, up, up went to Newcastle. We, we spent a couple of days and we, we done loads of stuff. Um, which was great fun, great to be at your gym with your team, with Ross, your coach, and all the kids. Kane, happy birthday, Kane. I believe it was his birthday yesterday. Shout out, Kane. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, it was so nice to see your environment, see, you know, where you train, see who's surrounding you. And then, obviously, we got that amazing opportunity to go to Newcastle, to the, the football ground. Yeah. What was that like? Because there's a very, such a, what I hope will be an iconic moment in the end of that documentary where you're stood there, Oh. Looking around and you're like fifty two thousand people, world champion title fight, let's go. It was, it was amazing. I, I literally felt like a movie star when I was getting it done, you know. I've never had nothing like this done for us, so when I was had all the cameras not my face, I was like, What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it was unreal. It was, it was a tyrant too. After the two days I was proper knackered, like I was yeah. but it was oh no, it was well, class two days late. Like. What would that mean to you to have a world title fight down the line in, in Newcastle's what? grounds like that? Couldn't put in the words. Mm. Imagine walking out. Have you seen the ground yourself? How good it is. And yeah. Well, we well, we said when we were stood there, we were like, "There's so, there's the energy. Like it's like it was like walking out to a gladiator field, like a, a gladiator arena or something. It was <laughs> insane. Then it packed out with fifty two thousand people going absolutely mental. I think Jordy's go more mental than ever in it. Like, yeah. it'll be honest, because I don't know what it's what's in the blood. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Well, and, and we look like even with football as well. Obviously, you know. Like, for me, I remember that whole Newcastle, Kevin Keegan, Alan Shearer yeah. era, because that was, that was kind of when it sort of reached Ireland, you know what I mean? It was so big, Alan Shearer especially. Um, but it's, it's always the passion of the Newcastle fans. And they're, much, they're so, you know, United fans yeah. or Arsenal fans, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's, it's, it's hot and cold, you know, people are like, but Newcastle, everyone loves Newcastle. The concept. You know? Yeah. The door, the class. No, it's really good. It's really good. So what is the plan now for the rest of the week? Obviously training hard. Uh, I've got just I've got strength work at 12. A bit shake out late. I mean, I'm mean, waiting. That's pretty sound. So I'm just really just breezing through now. But just I'm sharp and fit now. Like yesterday I've done 12 rounds of punching. Like standing on my head. Mm. I I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to go now. Just like I say, it's just not not, go, not going over the top. I'm not, not like... Yeah. Best, you know, just, uh, it's it's like any new pro it's the coaches it's the management it's the team that's trying to pull you back and say relax yeah. hold on it's common Dean Dean who's been like coach says he's done it all himself so he pretty much knows you can look at us yeah. go like you look a bit flat so tomorrow won't do as much you know what I mean but I've been feeling on fire this week so good stuff good stuff last question what is the goal for obviously we have long term goals obviously world champion filling their stadiums, but the immediate future in the next year, what is your goal? What going into the next year? Yeah, what are your plans? Is it to be active? Is it to Yeah, I'm gonna finish finish the year off, hopefully three no, going the next going the next year, fighting fight for you uh North East shows and maybe go for my first title, maybe like North East air. Maybe it's all right. Come on. <laughs> Let, why not? not? Why not? Let's go. Not get beat not get beat. Yeah. Good stuff. That's the mindset. No one stop. No one's coming near you. Good stuff. Well, listen, I'll let you go to the gym. I'll let you train. Enjoy your day. Good to chat to you. Quick one, yep. just to keep everyone in the loop of what's happening. And also, tickets, if you're interested in going to Tommy's pro debut, it's on August 27th, Sheffield Arena, Fight Zone. I will be there. Tommy will be there. 
get in touch with One Empire Management, Cutman Sheldon on Instagram or yourself and, and we'll sort out the tickets. Thank you very much. Okay. All my sponsors as well. Go on, give them a shout out. Good. Massive shout out to all my sponsors. Too many to name them all, but thank you very much for helping us out. It means the world. Yes. And, and I don't think people understand how important the role oh. of a sponsor is in a fighter's life. Huge. Honestly, the, it's class. It helps me out massively. Good stuff. Well, listen, I'm absolutely delighted for you, Tommy. It couldn't, this whole excitement, this whole way it's all coming together, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. So I'm absolutely <laughs> delighted. And I'm so excited for you. Nice and we'll talk to you soon. See you soon, right? Take care. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye.